Uh, all right, guys, I, we'll get started then. Let me just set up quickly. <laughs> okay, so my name is Rodrigo. You guys know me, but of course, I'll do a different introduction at the Sukkot. Uh Here, I'm going to present uh, my speak about using face recognition and site core personalization in a data-driven marketing uh, uh, in a brick-and-click store. So, you know, not just online, but also offline in uh, physical, physical channels. I will start by talking about uh, the smart bookshelf, what it is and the type of problems it, it is trying to fix. Okay, so we have here a fictitious company. They are called Books and Cores. Books and Cores is um, a, a bookstore that goes very well in terms of uh, online, okay? They have, they have a Sitecore website and they have uh, and a very engaged um, audience and all that. They also work very well already. They're marketing with uh, personalization and V-tests, email campaigns and all that. However, their physical stores are a bit struggling. They are not taking full advantage of the online success. So they ask themselves, uh, what could be done to increase the offline engagement and to offer uh, an improved experience for returning clients? And the, the company chose face recognition as a, a cool feature, a cool uh, functionality that can be used uh, in the in the online, I'm sorry, in the physical stores. Okay. Here a small example about how the behavior-based recommendation already happens in, in the website they have. Here you have two frequent visitors, Rodrigo and Eliani. So as you know, they have different behaviors and different tastes for books. And Sitecore is capable to match their preference based on their navigation. This is already in place. And as we know, all that information, all that analytics data is already being added to XDB. And all that is already in place. And then with all that in place, they also have this component, uh, which is capable to show recommended books for their uh, online users. All right. Here is uh, the user registration, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the explicit permission as well. So in order to be able to buy and and basically use the, the website, the user will have to register and fill this form. After the registration, uh, the user will be able to upload his image, his uh, selfie. And as you can see, they have this checkbox for the user to choose to opt in to use his picture uh, in physical stores for improved experience. As you can see, uh, when the user clicks in that, in that checkbox, a warning will uh, display um, to make sure that the user is conscious about the permission that he is given. This is very important, especially here, here in Europe, uh, I guess so, or not. Uh, everywhere where you have any kind of uh, privacy protection regulation, one of the biggest uh, biggest uh, obligations that you have as a company is to be transparent. Okay, I will show a little bit about how how we are doing that. Uh, uh, link between the user and 
the content that the user is browsing. So we have in Sitecore, you see in the left, um, the pages for genres. So we have anthology, we have biography and all that genres, their pages. Underneath them, we have uh, the books itself. And in the right, you see the marketing profiles that we put together. It's not a coincidence that the same, the marketing profiles, the profile keys, the profile cards and pattern cards, they all have the same names as the genders because that's because we are linking, you know, by you, by selecting profile cards, we are linking uh, the gender with the marketing profile itself. As a user visits the gender page, a book or, or maybe a book underneath the gender page, he will get points for that, for that specific gender, okay? The visiting the gender and getting the point is out of the box inside core, but visiting the children page and getting the points is something we customize, okay? Because it's not out of, out of the box. And of course, you don't want to go to each individual book and add these uh, pattern cards or profile cards. That won't be practical. That's why we needed that um, customization. Also, uh, if you go to experience profile, you notice that the contacts that you have already have their preferences uh, as you know matching as pattern cards. This is exactly the data that we are using to uh, display the, the recommendations. And how that recommendation is, is executed? Well, we have a custom component like I, I showed before, this component accepts as a data source, a gender, okay? So if I put, in this case, you have on screen, I have selected the gender science fiction. And that's why you see books from the science fiction gender. Here is, you know, layout details for the page. As you can see, the gender books are added three times, but why that happens? This is because we are personalizing. You see nine, number nine there, it means, means that we have nine variations, okay? So we are using these rules to set up, you know, what category should be used. In this case, we have three instances of the same component because I'm showing the topmost category, the second best and the third best. This uh, this rule here, this condition is always uh, is also customized, so we have to program that. And here you see the rule open. This is not big deal, very well known for the, for the whole community. All right, so a little bit about the physical stuff. Here is the smart bookshelf. You know, it's visually not much different than a normal bookshelf, except that it, have, it has a screen and a webcam attached to make the magic happen. And you have also genders, you know, books uh, organized in genders all around the, the screen. Also, we do have, in order to improve the visual experience, we do have LED, LED strips. They are arranged on the, each, each gender in such a way that when the recommendation is given, the LEDs will blink or turn on. It's like a visual signalization. So here is a small example of the bookshelf, the, the smart bookshelf in action. The system will stay in a loop, searching for a permitted face, okay? If no faces, if no faces are found, 
or if the user's choice is not to be recognized at all, then it will stay in this loop forever until a uh, no face is, is found. When a no face is found, you know, we use a cloud API, a face, I'm calling here face API. We use a vendor called, um, Kairos, sorry, I was recalling here, uh, Kairos, but actually you can plug in any kind of API, such as Microsoft Cognitive Services or anything like that. So the Cloud API is used to verify if the face is of a known person. If it is, then the API will give back the person identifier, which I will call face ID, okay? Next, with the face ID, the bookshelf will identify in the browser, in Sitecore, because our application also has, has a browser, to show the recommendations. And also, we'll, call the same, we'll do the same thing with JSS. We use JSS here because we need to turn on the LED strips and we cannot do that from within the browser. So we needed two clients here. And then in the end, the recommendation is provided and the genders are displayed. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I talked, I spoke a little bit about the detection loop, but here is uh, where I bring you some more details about it, okay? Uh, the first part of these is a very important loop here, the first loop. It works in a local API. So why do I have a local API? Because, you know, transmitting an image through the internet is costly. The web API, the cloud API also takes charge you money for every time you request it. So we have a local API that is not so smart as the cloud API, but is already capable to detect a face. So it is actually an object detector, not a face detector, where the object itself is a face, okay? And this is for saving bandwidth and saving and, and being able to quickly uh, give a feedback to the user until a face is detected. Next, when the face is detected, we need to go to the second loop to check if the face is known. Okay, Here, here's where we use the Cloud API. So the face being known means that the face is in the database. It also means that the face has given permission to his to be used, his, his picture to be used, okay? So that, that's important because the face can be in the database only because the user wants, but he don't want to join the face recognition process. And once it is permitted, it will go and do the things that we're seeing in the screen. It will identify the contact with the face ID, will show the recommendations on screen and blink the corresponding LEDs with JSS, of course. Okay, so a little bit about the hardware that we have. Uh, we have a Raspberry in the, in the bookshelf. It's a very cheap uh, PC, but however, it has uh, limited resources, but it it's cheap and enough to, to the job that we want you to, to do here. It runs Windows IoT Core, which is a special compilation of Windows 10 to be used in, in a small devices like a Raspberry Pi. And we implemented a, an application using Universal Windows Platform, UWP, which is the language that you use to to compile our application that does the, the whole thing. So attached to the Raspberry, we have a monitor and a camera. 
and also very important, we have a cable network. So, so the Raspberry can communicate with the site core. I know some of you may ask, uh, but I know that I'm pretty sure that Raspberry handles Wi-Fi. I know it does. However, Windows I IoT does not support that yet. Um, because of that, we have to use cable network. Right? So Raspberry, by using their GDLP, uh, we are going to, to control the relay module. And the relay module is, you know, is there only to be like the switch pilot by, by Raspberry. And uh, the reason I'm using it is because Raspberry doesn't uh, handle more than five volts at the same time. So the LEDs needs, uh, the LED needs uh, 12 volts and we cannot plug that directly to the Raspberry or you will burn your Raspberry, which is exactly what I did the first time. So I, I learned the wrong, the hard way. Can I ask you guys to mute yourself for, for a while? I'm getting some feedback. Yeah, thank you. All right. So now um, I would like to present you a video that we put together. I will paste the video link to the chat window so you guys can play at your side, okay? I will not be able to show during the presentation because of the audio, it will not go through. But can you please do a favor to open this video at your side and let me know when it's finished.
Guys, please let me know when you're finished and don't forget that you are on mute, okay? Yeah, it's got about a minute left. Okay. <laughs> Very nice guys. <laughs> okay. If that if you guys are done with them, I'm continue. I don't have much more. Actually, I do have something interesting to show here. I'm gonna open my webcam and do some real life demo. Let me just Can you guys see the bookshelf? Yes. Yeah. Oh. That's what I call that's what I call a portable library. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is me in the bookshelf. Like I showed you guys before, it is in a loop trying to look for a face. So I'm gonna approach. Oh, we took the wrong guy there. It, yeah, it took the guy from the poster. Let me try again. So my face is recognized. What is going on? I tested so many times before this demo. Oh, it was just taking some time to load. You see, you guys see the LEDs? Uh, the experience will stand for three minutes for 30 seconds. It's adjustable, of course, depends on how much, how many time you want to expose your client to that experience. I'll run that again. So, right? So it knows that I am, I like anthology, horror, and drama. So now I will invite my friend Roberto to reach out to the bookshelf as soon as the experience finishes. Thirty seconds, the longest thirty seconds ever. There you go. Roberto will approach the place and he obviously has different tastes that I do. So that's why he's seen different things. Now I'm gonna quickly share my desktop again, only to show, so I'll pause my webcam, only to show that when Roberto doesn't like that, he wants to have, uh, you know, he wants to have his face not in the database anymore. So Roberto goes, oops. Roberto logs to the website and goes to his account and removes the permission. Now his face should not be, you know, taken into account anymore. Let just the thing finish. I will switch to my webcam again.
All right, so Roberto has removed the permission and I'm gonna switch back to the webcam. The webcam, so Roberto, please approach the bookshelf again. So now Roberto should not be taken. Yeah, you see that no experience has been presented to Roberto because he is not in the database anymore. So I'll just go back to my screen for the last time to finish my presentation. Uh, okay. So back to the presentation. You saw the demo and what can we, what can the future reserve what can be achieved with this kind of technology in the future? So I'll bring you here some ideas of how to use this, you know, how to improve the bookshelf. So we can give recommendation feedback, you know, so when you got a, a, a face is detected, the monitor can still be checking the, if the person is taking, you know, paying attention to the recommendations or not. And based on that, you can refine your recommendations. You can build a heat map, you know, of your bookstore. So if you have multiple smart bookshelves, we can create heat maps to show what parts of the store are more accessed than the others. Improved interaction. We can improve our recommendations by taking into account not only the online behavior, but also other facets such as you know gender age and even the humor the mood of the person and when regulations up, uh, permits we can uh, use the same the same facets that i mentioned before even with anonymous users you know because even if the person is someone i don't know i can still see if the person is happy or in a bad mood and also, I'd like to see in the future this and instead a little bit more about how to use Cortex or any other kind of uh, artificial intelligence to, to improve recommendations. Here, an example about how, some examples about how we can use that in stores overall. So you can give special treatment to your customers, such as, you know, you can greet the person by name, you can celebrate the birthday with discounts and etc. You can have brick and click promotions, you know, promotions that includes online and offline uh, interactions, such as special discounts for people that are on both channels or even draw prizes. You can um, organize a draw and in order to, you know, for your online users, but in order to the user, to the customer to really get the price, he needs to show up in a, in, a, in a physical store and his face must be recognized to find out if the person really get a price or not. Also one very interesting thing is personalized ads. You know, we can use the online behavior and all that things that we mentioned here not only to give recommendations, but also to give personalized ads. And also most important, we can check the previous engagements, the past engagements, to see if the a certain kind of, of ad is or is not of uh, the user interest. So let's say in the first time the user approached the, uh, the, the store, you provided one kind of announce but the user didn't express any interest. The user was not watching it and the camera captured that. So we can skip the same kind of um, ads in the next time and in this way refine 
what we are offering. Okay, guys, it's pretty much it. I would like just to bring some faces to the table. These two are very important to me and were suffering a lot uh, these days because of my lack of social life. Roberto did the Raspberry API, uh, APP, and the video as well. Eliane from Udesk, or State University, gave the location. Mark Service, thank you. You were the guy who did the edition, the narration, and all that. And Yuna for being my mentor. That's pretty much it. Anyone has any question? Just remember that you guys are students.